uh, let's start the, the final class today is the I, I think that today is the final class of this semester um, so if we see the our syllabus I think we have covered all the topics except liquidation. Uh, liquidation for the exam point of view, it is not that much important, but anyhow, it is better to have an idea about the liquidation. Since it's a one of the topic in the syllabus, so I like to cover the liquidation today. The last two classes we have seen or we discussed about the corporate governance. So if time permits after the liquidation, then I will take through all one or two past paper questions related to corporate governance. Otherwise, uh, you need not to worry about much because I think uh, IBSL arranged a paper class on uh, the revision class on um, 8 may or something you have to uh, check hello yeah 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 uh, i one more class we can know okay then i'll just Actually, to, I am I'm planning to finish it today. Uh, okay, okay, I'll, I'll let you know that if, if I couldn't finish it today itself, then I'll let you know. Okay, okay. Yeah, actually, the management informed me that um, uh, the next week will be the uh, holiday, but they can give the chance uh, to conduct the class for the following week. If anybody wants, really wants to discuss any topic or any revisions, I can do it uh, on, uh, I think, 20th, uh, 24th or 25th, that, that weekend, the, not, the, not the next weekend, the following weekend. So if you all really need, you all can uh, tell me or you all can inform me through the chat box. Then I will actually, um, I have already had planned to finish it today. But if you need to particularly discuss any topic or as a sort of revision class, we can conduct if you need. Otherwise, I can complete today. So if you see the syllabus, the incorporation, licensing of financial institution, shareholders and financial reporting and analysis, audit, compliance and corporate governance, risk management, I have covered already. And Mr. Gamanayaka covered already the group and organization structure, expansion strategies, corporate strategic planning and financial fraud. So almost all the topics have been covered except liquidation. So in order to complete the syllabus, I like to uh, start the liquidation or I like to discuss the liquidation today. But again, I'm reiterating that for the exam point of view, it, it is very less weighted a topic, so you need not to much worry about it. I, I told you all that exam point of view, you'll have to concentrate on the risk management, corporate governance, and of course you have to study every topic, but the main structural questions are coming, risk management, corporate governance, compliance, audit, and financial reporting. Uh, those are the topics, and the organization structure, financial fraud and all, you'll have to study that topic. So. Um, that is the, uh, with that introduction, I like to start the move to the, the liquidation of the company, bank and finance companies. So, uh, before going to that, uh, you will remember that the first three classes, we have studied something about related to the company law. And I gave some introduction on uh, what is financial institution, 
and under the financial institutions uh, who are the regulatory body under the financial institution what are the institution coming under the uh, finance institution i said about the licensed finance bank uh, sorry licensed uh, commercial banks licensed specialized bank and finance companies specialized leasing companies primary dealers etc then i have uh, go through the uh, permitted business or which institution can be do what are, what type of the businesses and who are the regulators of the business of course there are three main regulators in sri lanka the first and, uh, and most important regulator is the central bank of sri lanka which regulate the licensed commercial bank licensed specialized bank and li licensed finance companies specialized leasing companies and primary dealers and there are other regulator called uh, insurance uh, icsr icrsl the insurance regulatory commission of sri lanka which uh, monitored or regulate the insurance industry or insurance companies in sri lanka in insurance company there are two type of insurance companies which is uh, life insurance company or long term insurance companies and general insurance companies both are Uh, regulated by the insurance uh, regulatory commission and then the capital market regulator securities and exchange commission of course cover the cap capital market regulations and they are the people regulating the uh, stock exchange and stock brokers and um, unit trust companies likewise they are they they regulate so we have seen that the first three classes about it and then the licensing and regulatory pro procedures we have uh, discussed and stopped that three, three classes then then i move to the other section so uh, and that time i told you all that the liquidation is sort of uh, one of the topic we i haven't covered you but i will cover at the later part so that is i am going to do so anyhow you just to recapitulate or recapture the um, things which we have studied i gave the uh, things in the table format so the type of finance institutions we first studied about the licensed commercial banks the main business of course the last time also there was a question about the difference between the licensed finance companies and specialized leasing companies the uh, sort not questions in the last january exam so you can write it based on this so this will give so <clears throat> this is just to give an idea I, i i think we have already discussed about these things i just to recapture that you uh, refresh your mind i just give the this table so licensed commercial bank they are accepting that they allow to accept at the deposits uh, particularly the demand deposit or current deposits along with the savings and fixed deposits from the general public and the main regulator is central bank of sri lanka the bank supervision department and um, the nature of regulatory activities leasing issuing uh, sorry licensing issuing and regulating and supervision that is the main function of the regulator then the second type of institution is licensed specialized bank the licensed specialized bank of course which is also under the banking act and uh, uh license specialized under the bank act what is the difference between the licensed commercial bank and licensed specialized bank which is very primary questions very pre preliminary questions what is the difference the licensed commercial bank cannot so sorry the licensed commercial bank can have the current account but the licensed specialized bank cannot provide the current account services to the customers so they are having the demand deposit and saving their sorry saving deposit and fixed deposit they can't have the demand deposit accounts and other than that the lending and investing uh, all the other other businesses are permitted and then the re regulator is again uh, central bank of sri lanka and licensing issuing and regulatory and supervision part is doing by uh, the regulator the bank supervision department so in central bank there are several departments so the bank supervision department covering this licensed commercial bank and license uh, super specialized bank supervision and regulations 
and then the second type of uh, the third type of institutions called licensed uh, finance companies which is also allowed to accept the deposits but here again they can't accept the current account and lending and investment is per permitted and the central bank is the main regulator under the central bank the depart department of supervision of non bank financial institution is a main regulatory body and they, they are working under the finance business act number 42 of 2011 and then again there is another category specialized finance leasing company actually this is the question this time the january paper there was a question called the compare the finance license finance companies and specialized finance co leasing company so what are the difference between that actually the specialized leasing companies they can't raise the funds they can't raise the deposits they can't accept the deposit from the general public they, what they can do is they can raise the kcha capital and they can borrow and by uh, using that fund they can engage the finance leasing businesses and then the licensed microfinance companies which is um, i think like oh, the four companies have been granted uh, for license uh, to do the uh, microfinance business so they can actually they can accept the deposits from the members and provide the financial accommodation based on the microfinance act so again the uh, department of supervision of non bank finance institutions uh, they are the people uh, regulating it's coming under the central bank and the microfinance act number 6 of 2016 uh, govern these uh, regulations actually even though the, we are saying the central bank who is the sort of authoritative board for the central bank is monetary board actually the monetary board has the legal power to take the decision and all so uh, the central bank but the central bank is governed by the monetary board of monetary board so the ultimately the monetary board is the power, powerful authority to uh, or ultimate responsibility to supervise these things and then one of the other institution the primary dealer the primary dealer of course they it, it uh, the primary dealers have been uh, appointed by the central bank to engage with the buying and selling of government securities at the primary auction Every, if you know that in the every Friday, uh, Wednesday there was a treasury bill auction, and uh, twice in a month or once in a month there will be a um, or there is a treasury bond auction. So these primary dealers can direct uh, in the box auction they can quote the price and they can directly purchase from the central bank. In Sri Lanka there are twelve primary dealers are allowed to. Uh, do the engagement but i think two companies have been um, two companies and license have been suspended temporarily so they can't do the engage the business other than that other companies can and again uh, the department of non bank super finance institutions can monitor these primary dealer activities uh, and licensing and they are the people issuing the licensing uh, regulations and all and they are actually these uh, these primary dealer companies are governed by the registered stock and securities ordinance and local treasury bill ordinance and the finally i am going to tell one of the one more uh, institution the fourth institution which is cooperative rural bank actually there is another segment in the segment in the, in the country the cooperative rural bank which is also allowed to accept the deposit from the members which we have discussed these things we have discussed very detailed manner i just to give you all to refresh your mind there the, this is also allowed to deposit uh, uh, allowed to accept the deposit from the members and the general public lending to members and investing excess fund and cooperative development commission or a provincial cooperative development commission will be the Uh, regulate, and the other people giving licensing and banks and uh, licensing, auditing, and issuing regulations, etc. This is for cooperative rural banks. 
and then stock broker i have already said that uh, under the sec securities and exchange commission the stock brokers uh, dealers and exchange shares are coming and uh, unit trust also same and then insurance companies and insurance brokers dealers uh, can be accept the premium in return to the insurance provided and ICS, IRCS, the Insurance Regulatory Commission of Sri Lanka, regulations of insurance industry under the Act Number 43 of 2000 as amended substitute. So actually the IRCS job is granting license or issuing license and then uh, issuing the regulations and uh, doing the supervision is their job. So these are the things we have discussed and we have discussed so many uh, the company act and all actually you may you may have the tutes and all so you can refresh uh, for the detailed manner. So having this sort of uh, uh, recapture the, uh, the, the things which we have studied in the first three classes I'm moving to the the winding up the provision of company act. Actually, the winding in the winding up in the sense the close down a company. So, uh, but it can be say in the company sector, it says that paying of all liabilities through a legal procedure under the Companies Act can be called winding up. Or at, uh, during the winding up, they have to pay off all the liabilities through a legal procedure under the Companies Act. The winding up can be winding up can be either by the court. The court can order, give the order to wind up a company. There are circumstances under which we, which we will study the later on. There are circumstances court will order to wind up. The second one is voluntary winding up. So voluntary winding up also can be, there's a provision in the act for the voluntary winding up. So the shareholders themselves, they agree to go for a winding up. And the third one is subject to the supervision of the court, uh, they can do the winding up. And uh, the winding up by the court, the first thing we are just, we are going to expand the first, we have studied the th three circumstances. The winding up can be either by the court or voluntary winding up or subject to supervision of the court. So now we are moving to the first type of winding up, winding up by the court. So they actually the winding of the court can't come and say that okay winding up this company. So there are some circumstances under which a court can say the winding up or winding up, the court can uh, do the winding up. The first one is company has a special resolution resolve such winding up. So if, if a company pass a resolution under certain circumstances to wind up, then under such, they just file the, the, the winding up resolution in the court and then court will say to wind up. And company does not commence business with a year, within a year from its incorporation or suspends business for one year period. Actually at the initial class, we have studied that when a company registered uh, a person or uh, a group of people registered a company so from the date of registration incorporation within one year period they have to start the business otherwise that company has to be wind up or if a company running uh, smoothly but for one year period they could not uh, run the business or they suspend all the businesses then in that circumstances the company can the court can uh, the uh, the company can be winding up by the court and number of shareholders fall below the requirement for example if it is a private company there should be at least two um, shareholders if the number of shareholders fall below that level then the company can be winding up uh, by the court and company has the no directors okay there are there are shareholders and there is a company but 
there is no directors. All the directors resign from the company. In that circumstances also, the uh, winding up can be by the court. And other thing is we can just say that company is unable to pay its debt. Sort of insolvency situations. What is insolvency? We have studied in the class. Since it's a uh, sort of last class, we can just um, think about it. Or we can just refresh our uh, other, other, other areas which we have studied. What is insolvency? We have studied in the risk management part. When we are studying the risk management, we studied about the insolvency. What is insolvency? Can anybody? Yeah, insolvency, if a company in the long run, if the present value of the assets are not enough to meet the present value of the liabilities, then it can be called as an insolvent. It means their assets are not enough to meet their liabilities. So, uh, so that sort of insolvency, the company is unable to pay its debt. Then in that circumstances also, company can be winding up by the court. And court is of the opinion that it is just an equitable to wound up. Then the court will do the winding up. Under these circumstances, the company can be wind up by the court. Understand? Any questions you will want to ask from this? The circumstances. We will study some one or two uh, circumstances in detail manner. Before that, do you all want to ask any questions uh, related to these circumstances? Then I can just, if you have any questions, then I can just uh, answer that. Okay. The first we have studied actually in the, in the in the previous slide we have studied that the company is unable to pay its debt. It's then in that circumstances the company can be winding up by the court. So now we are going to study it about. What is the circumstances of inability to pay debt? A creditor to whom the company is indebted to a sum of some exceeding rupees 50,000 has served a request at the registered office of the company, a demand to repay such debt. And for three weeks, the company has not been able to pay such amount then that company is considered as an inability to pay debt or insolvent. It's clear. That means that the creditor, he just saved the letter saying that the, he, he, the creditor who gave more than 50,000 rupees to the company for the credit, maybe Supply the uh, supply the goods or any other services or any other circumstances. He is a creditor. Then he uh, the company could not make the payment. He saved the letter. Okay, uh, give the fifty thousand rupees you you own to me. And then at that circumstances, if the company could not meet that uh, requirement for three weeks time, then the credit uh, then that that circumstances is considered as an inability to pay that. Inability to meet the execution or other procedure issued on judgment decree the order of any court of in favor of credit of the company. In that circumstance also, it is considered. And the court is satisfied that company is unable to pay its debt, taking into account all liabilities, including any contingent and prospective liabilities of the company. So when the company desires satisfy that, sorry, when court is satisfied that the company is unable to pay its debt, 
take into account that all its liabilities plus contingent liabilities. What does mean the contingent liability? If it is the contingent liability means any liability which is not a liability now, but it may be the liability in future. For example, there's a uh, there's a uh, labor court in in the labor court there's a case going on. So, but that uh, the uh, the auditor or company they are thinking that that the case will be in favorable to the company so that the opponent will win the case so at the uh, if, if the opponent will win the case then the company has to pay uh, a huge amount of the compensation to that employee in that circumstances that amount will be considered as a contingent liability even though that is not a liability today but it will be the liability in future and prospective liabilities of the company so in that case if the court satisfied that the bank is unable to pay its debt then at that circumstances it will be considered that the company's inability to pay the debt understand Then presenting an application to the court. The application to winding up shall be petitioned by the company or any creditor or creditors, including any contingent or prospect, prospective creditor or creditors. So to request the court, the application of winding up shall be the petition, winding up petition shall be filed by the company or the credit any of the creditor or creditors even they are the contingent creditors then they they can understand this is actually this is nothing to explain much because it's it's sort of the act the act it says that these are the circumstances then we just uh, keep it in mind that's all that can be by all or any other above parties jointly and separately. Yeah, they, they say that it can be jointly the company, all the creditors jointly, uh, contingent creditors jointly or separately, it can file the court. So the, in the, the winding up of the company by the court, then that application of winding up can be filed by a company or creditor or creditors. Even it is a contingent creditor or Prospective credit. Understand? Then consequences of winding up order. On making the winding up order, a copy of the order should be forwarded by the company as prescribed in the register render of companies. It says that the making a winding of order, a copy of the order should be forwarded by the company or as prescribed to the registrar general of companies. Once such order is made, no actions or proceedings shall be proceeded with or comments against the company except with the permission of the court and subject to such terms that court may be imposed. So, once that uh, order is made then they can't accept the court approval they can't uh, start the proceedings any proceeding and a winding of order shall be operated in favor of all creditors of the company as if a joint petition is made by all a winding of order shall be operated in favor of all creditors of the company if a joint petition is made by all these are the act actually you can just read and uh, get the idea about this uh, uh, that uh, things and if you will need any any explanation please uh, you can ask at any time or you can um, you can just uh, submit it through the uh, inbox then liquidator 
the court may appoint a liquidator or liquidators for the purpose of conducting the proceeding in winding up a company and performing the necessary duty with respect to the same. So, uh, once the court decided, the court may appoint the liquidator or liquidators for the purpose of conducting the proceeding in winding a company. The court may appoint a liquidator provisionally at any time after an application for the winding up presented and before the winding up order is made. So they, they say the court, court may appoint the liquidator once that application of winding up is presented and before the winding up order is made, then they can do the, the court can appoint the liquidator. These are the act. And the once appoint the liquidator shall take into his custody or under his control all the property and things in action to which the company is indicted. So once that liquidator is appointed, the liquidator shall take into his custody or under his control all the properties and things in action to which the company is entitled. So once the liquidator is earlier, the, maybe the director board is controlling all the things, but once the liquidator is appointed, then liquidator will take into his control all the properties in order to dispose and liquidate the, to do the liquidation process. And then in the, okay, so far do you all have any questions to ask from me? Actually, these are the act. It's, it's a uh, says, uh, so nothing too much explain to you all. Uh, but even though, uh, I'm asking if you'll have any questions, I can just uh, answer. Okay. Then we are seeing the powers of the liquidator with the sanction of the court or the comm committee of the inspection. What are the powers? A liquidator has the powers to bring or defend, defend any actions or other legal proceeding in the same, in the name and on behalf of the company. So he, he has the power to defend the, any actions or any legal proceeding in the name and on behalf of the company. So he has the power to do that. And to carry on the business of the company, so, so far it is beneficial for the winding of our company. So, okay, they can, for example, if, if a company is a supermarket company or a retail business company, uh, the winding up uh, order has been, um, the, the liquidator has been approved, uh, appointed, but it is beneficial for a company to run up the company and close it rather than suddenly close the branch or any retail shop. The, it's better to company for it. I'm just giving the example for retail shop. So it's better to beneficial for a, to, for a winding up to carry on the business to certain period. So he has the power. To appoint the attorney at law to assist him. So he has the power to appoint the attorney at law to assist him. And to pay any classes of creditors in full. So he, he has the power to pay any creditors in full, any classes. Of, so there may be several categories of creditors. So I think there are, uh, there, there are preferences. So this creditor will, um, uh, for example, if it is a bank, the depositors will get the, the first uh, preference to settle the any, any, any remaining things. So the, uh, though, so he can just based on that uh, uh, provisions and all, they pay, uh, pay any class of creditors in full. And to make any compromise or arrangement with the creditors or persons claiming to be creditors or having or challenging themselves to have any claim present or future certain or contingent. So then that there are other, other powers uh, that it's, it's continuing that to sell the movable and immovable property and things in action of the company by public auction or private contract. So he has the liquidator has the power to sell the movable or immovable property 
and things in action of the company by pu public option or private contract he can sell. And to, to do all acts and to execute in the name and on behalf of the company, all deeds received and other documents and we are necessary to use the seal of the company, then he has the power. And to prove Frank <coughs> claim in the bankruptcy, insolvency or sequenciation of any contribution and any to receive uh, dividends he has the power. And to draw, accept, make and endorse any bills of exchange, promissory notes and similar instrument in the name on behalf of the company with the same effect as it was done by the company in the course of its business. To raise any money required on the security of the company's act. To appoint any agent to do any business on behalf of the liquidator. To do all such other things, he has the power. So there are several powers. Actually, the liquidator, once the court appoints the liquidators, liquidators has the power. So all these powers, there's nothing to much explain. He, it, it is mentioned in the Act, Companies Act. So he's a liquidator has these powers. Anything you all want to ask from me? If you want to ask any questions, you can ask even through the chat box. Uh, you can send the message, then I can uh, I can answer your questions, of course. Okay, then we just uh, so far we have discussed about the the winding up by court. Yes, we have first we have seen about the three type of winding up. The first one is the winding up by court. The second one we have mentioned that voluntary winding up. So now we are going to discuss about the voluntary winding up. So what are the circumstances voluntary winding up can happen? When the period of the company fixed by an article expires or event occurs, an article provided the company to be dissolved and has passed the resolution at a general meeting. What is this? For example, in the article of association, uh, in the article it says that, okay, the company has been uh, formulated for a certain period. Oh, to achieve the particular event. Then that period has been expired or even that event has occurred and the article provided the, for example, if that event occurred, then the company has to be winding up, dissolved, then under those circumstances, by passing a special resolution in the general meeting, the voluntary winding up can be called. For example, at the time, uh, for example, uh, there's a there's a the large project going on. Uh, uh, let's say um, port for uh, a new port. They are the government is constructing the new port. So uh, the company is uh, formulate just to uh, facilitate some services for that port project. And once it says in the article, if that project, the port, uh, project is completed, that uh, the company's period is completed. So it is, uh, it is, it is mentioned in the article. So and that the event occurred, the, uh, the port project is completed by the government. Then it has to be winding up. At the time of uh, formulating the company itself, it's mentioned either the period ten years, five years, or twenty-five years, or if it is an event, then it has to be winding up. Results by the special resolution, voluntary winding up. So for the voluntary winding up, the, the, if a special resolution is uh, passed, then uh, they can go for a uh, voluntary winding up. 
Then third one is resolved by special resolution to the effect that it cannot be cannot by reason of its liabilities continue its business and that is advisable to winding up then voluntary winding up can be called. Understand? So there are three circumstances given uh, for a voluntary winding up. And then there are notice of resolution. Once a company passes a resolution to wind up voluntarily, within 14 days from passing of such resolution, it should give notice of such resolution by publishing in the Gazette. These are, these are legal provisions. It says that if it is a company passes a resolution to wind up voluntarily, Within 14 days from passing such resolution, it should give a notice by such resolution by publishing in the Gazette. So it has to be published in the Gazette. The liquidator is deemed to be an officer of the company. So they have to appoint the liquidator. So the liquidator is deemed to be an officer of the company. The voluntary liquidation is deemed to commence at the time of passing such resolution. So at the time of passing the resolution, it is considered that the voluntary liquidation is deemed to be commenced. The company shall, from the date of commencement of the winding up case, season, to carry on its business except to the extent required for the beneficial winding up of the company. So, once that resolution is passed, the company shall... The, uh, from the shall from the date of commencement of the winding up season to carry on its ceases to carry on its business except to the extent required for the beneficial winding up of the company. So uh, that is one of the uh, things related to the notice of resolution. and declaration of solvency where a company is to be wound up voluntarily the majority of its directors may at a meeting of the directors make a statutory declaration to the effect that they have made a full inquiry into the affairs of the company and that they are of the opinion that company will be able to pay its debt in full within such period no, not exceeding 12 months from the date of commencement of the winding up as specified in the declaration. So this is just for a, for a debt problem they can't wind up uh, they go for a, a voluntary wind up. So it says that if it is a company to be wound up voluntarily, the majority of the uh, directors at a meeting has to make a declaration that <coughs> they have made a full inquiry on the affairs of the company and they have the opinion that company will be able to pay its debt in full, in full, keep in mind in full, within such period not exceeding 12 months period from the date of commencement of winding up as specified in the declaration. So they have to make that solvency declaration. Actually, there may be a question in the exam, the possible question, what is solvency declaration? So you can mention that when the company go for a voluntary winding up, wound up, the majority of the shareholders has to meet and they have to make a statutory declaration it's saying that they have the opinion that company will able to pay its all debt full with such a period not exceeding 12 months from the date of commencement. So that, that can be considered as a declaration of solvency. Okay, because when you are studying something, what you have to do is you have to you have to think about okay, what are the possible questions can arise from this uh, the thing which I am studying. Always you have to focus because I'm always again and again telling you all you that there are two purpose of this studying the uh, any course. 
What are those two? The first one is pass the exam. Because, okay, we are following that IBSL, uh, IBS in the IBSL, the diploma course or certificate course or any courses. Or degree courses or any courses, the first purpose is pass the exam. That's absolutely, there is no second question on that. Pass the exam is the first. Prime. But that is not only the uh, purpose. The second and main purpose to get the knowledge. What is the purpose of studying? And it's okay, pass the exam is one of the ultimate motive. Okay, that, that may be the motive, but the purpose is get the knowledge. So when you are the, those those two are the main thing, the pass the exam and get the knowledge. That's what I, I when I'm studying uh, starting this class, I, I told you the liquidation is not that important for a exam purpose. There may be one or two questions in one, one or two more, uh, small questions, but for the purpose of getting knowledge, the overall knowledge about the finance institution management, you must have the knowledge about the, you must have full knowledge. So that include the liquidation process as well. Okay. So when you are studying, again, I'm saying then when you are studying one slide or one topic, you have to see what are the possible questions can arise from this and other thing is you have to get the knowledge okay and declaration of solvency it's continuing the declaration is not valid unless it is made within five weeks immediately preceding the date of passing the resolution for voluntary winding up and is delivered to register general for a registration by the date it includes a statement of company's assets and liabilities as at the last practicable date before making such declaration. So before that declaration, uh, the last possible date, they have to give a statement about assets and liability of a company. Then other one is a shareholder's voluntary winding up. If a declaration is passed and delivered as st stated in the company sector. And creditors voluntary winding up. So these are the things um, we can just um, think about the declaration of uh, solvency. And now we are coming to the third one. What the first one? It is a winding up by court. Then second thing we have studied about voluntary winding up and third one is winding up subject to court supervision. When a company passed a resolution for voluntary winding up, the court may take an order that such winding up shall continue but subject to the supervision of the court then that can be considered as a winding up subject to the court supervision okay so winding up by court the first thing and then second thing is voluntary winding up under the voluntary winding up there is another uh, other section the winding up subject to the sub court supervision when a company passed a resolution for voluntary winding up the court may make an order that such winding up shall continue, but subject to the supervision of the court, then it can be considered as a third category, winding up subject to the court supervision. So these all are about the uh, winding up procedure for general procedure of any company, which are in the uh, Companies Act, basically the Companies Act. Any questions you wanted to ask from this so far? You won't ask any questions from me. Okay. 
then I'll move to the uh, next section which is the liquidation of a licensed bank okay so far we have studied about the we have studied about uh, winding up then it's the provision in the companies act now we are moving to the liquidation of a bank authority to liquidate in the act it says that it's actually it's in the the bank banking act the director of bank supervision is the liquidator if in case of bank what are the things related to liquidation is the li director of bank supervision will be the or is the liquidator when winding up and they say that no voluntary liquidation without the approval of the monetary board okay the bank so suddenly the bank can't uh, just say that they they can they go for a uh, liquidation without the monetary board approval they can't do the voluntary liquidations because why why that stringent policies are there because to safeguard the depositors money where the monetary board authorize the bank should immediately cease to carry on business exercising exercisingly only powers for an orderly liquidations so they say that the, they can't go for a voluntary liquidation without the monetary board approval so okay the monetary board done the approval they can say that immediately cease to carry the own business exercise only the powers for an orderly liquidation and repay some of money due to depositors and other creditors wind up all operations up undertaken prior to such authorization and then again the there is other category the compulsory liquidation the monetary board may revoke the license and proceed for compulsory liquidation where monetary board is of the opinion that we are the assets of the bank that it has approved voluntary liquidation is not sufficient for full discharge of all the obligations or the compilation uh, of voluntary liquidation is unduly delayed so in that circumstances monetary board license uh, go for a compulsory liquidation and director of bank supervision will be vested with the full and exclusive powers for the management and control of the affairs of the bank for compulsory liquidation these are these are some directions and banking act saying so so first thing is they can they can't go for a uh, voluntary liquidation without the monetary board approval even though i am saying that it says it's even though we are central bank the, the supervisory authority is the central bank the monetary board has the ultimate power so that's what it says that without monetary board approval they can go for a bank can't go for a voluntary liquidations and if it is a voluntary liquidation and in that liquidation if, if the monetary board approve then they will say that to immediately cease to carry the business only the exercise the powers order to liquidate and repay all the money due to the depositors and other creditors and wind up all operations undertaken prior to such authorization so that is what uh, the liquidation and then they say that in certain circumstances it may be uh, compulsory liquidation where the bank assets of the uh, the where assets of the bank that is approved voluntary liquidation is not sufficient to fully discharge of its obligations and the com uh, completion of voluntary liquidation is unduly delayed then they can go for a uh, come uh, the monetary board says that to go for revoke the license and go for a compulsory liquidation and director of bank supervision will be vested with the full exclusive powers for management and control the affairs of the bank for the compulsory liquidation 
priority clients i say that okay there are uh, even when when in the bank balance sheet there are several assets and there are several liabilities when liquidate uh, wind up the operations and make the payment for creditors and all there are priority of clients first one is necessary and reasonable expenditure incurred by the liquidator in the winding up that's the first thing of course whatever the expenditure expense expenses arise for the winding up first they can settle off those things and then second one is wages and salaries of the officers and employees of the bank for the immediately preceding 3 months of the commencement of winding up procedure then they can go for they can pay their salaries and wages for immediately preceding 3 uh, months period so the salaries and then taxes rates and deposits owed to state and local authorities tax tax rates and deposits owed to state and local authorities it has to be given and fees and ass assessments due to central bank has to be paid and fund funds deposited in the banks with the interest accrued up to maximum of 20000 for any account can be other depositors with interest if any actually even though we are saying that uh, the uh, the depositors will be get the priority but before the depositors priority there are other expenses other things has to be me the first one is if any expenditures reasonable expenditures arise or incur by the liquidator for the process of winding up that expenses has to be meet or priority has to be given first priority that that expenditures related to liquidity winding up and the second one is salary and wages of the officers immediately preceding 3 months period commencing from the winding up procedure that has to be second actually there there could be a good uh, reasonable questions in this uh, thing so what is the priority claims and uh, they can ask that whether even though that uh, in a bank the depositors are given a high priority uh, but they are even there are some other payments priority than the prioritize than the depositors are you angry then you will have to write this things taxes rates and deposit on the state and local authorities has to be given first priority then third priority and fees and assessment uh, assessments due to the central bank then then funds deposited in a bank with the interest accrued maximum to one uh, 20000 20000 in these days is nothing no that is the first then then the other deposits with the interest given so in these circumstances i i i like to ask from the students uh the deposit insurance so i like to explain to you all about the deposit insurance i, I think before moving to the uh, oh i I'll, okay I'll, i'll come on the later on. okay then the cancellation of license by the monetary board the failure to commence the business the, there are circumstances where the license of the bank may be cancelled by cancelled by the monetary board failure to commence business within 9 months from the issue of license then the license will be cancelled so these are the circumstances failure to pay any debt incurred on its becoming due then it has to be the the cancellation of license by the monetary board in, in 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 case of the license bank these are applicable all these are applicable to a license bank we are first we have studied about the general rules under the general rules we have studied about the the four uh, three categories the winding up by the court voluntary winding up and winding up subject to the supervision of the court that three things then now we are talking about the liquidation of the license bank understand okay 
then uh, cease to carry out a banking business and where it is an LCB incorporated outside Sri Lanka had its license or authority to operate, cancel or withdrawn by the appropriate authority or regulatory body for country in which the bank was incorporated, then here also they will cancel. For example, uh, if an Indian bank or Chinese bank uh, or US bank, which, which has a branch here, the licensed commercial bank branch here, and uh, in their country, <coughs> X Bank, for example, X Bank, which is originally incorporated in India and which has the uh, branch here in Colombo. Okay, then as a foreign bank, it has the branch. If the original license, it, it has the original, okay, the, here Central Bank also will give the grant the license, but original license for that original bank. The, the parent bank was granted by the RBA, maybe in, if it is India, the Reserve Bank of India would have created and the granted. Then if the RBA cancelled the license in India, the parent bank's license, then the foreign branch of this, uh, the Sri Lankan foreign branch also has to be go for a cancellation. The Motri board will cancel the license. Understand? Are you clear? Okay, these are the circumstances uh, for the cancellation of license by the monetary board. Anything you all want to talk from me? Okay, then the subsequent action on cancellation. The monetary board may give notice to the company of the cancellation and shall communicate same. Okay, once the central bank, the monetary board of the central bank of Sri Lanka cancel the license of a bank, the monetary board may give notice to the company of cancellation and shall communicate the same. And within 30 days of uh, 30 days, the company can tender objections why license should not be cancelled. So actually there should be a chance or uh, chance should be given by, to the bank no, to, uh, to convey their uh, to justify their stance. So for that purpose it says that within 30 days the company can tender the objection why license should not be cancelled. Then any person Aggrieved by a license cancellation decision of the monetary board may appeal the, to the court of appeal within 14 days of him being informed by the monetary board of such cancellation. So any person by the cancellation he, he may affect that he can appeal in the court of appeal. He can make the appeal within 14 days. Keep in mind within 14 days he has to uh, may appeal. And the court of appeal may on the appeal made or, uh, to it confirm or revise or modify or set aside the decision when such appeal is made and make any other order as the interest of the justice may be required. So, subsequent to the cancellation, there are procedures. It's, it's, it's not na nothing like just issue the monetary board of the central bank, issue the cancellation and then go for a winding up or okay, liquidation. There are <coughs> some procedure. The first procedure is the monetary board has to convey the message, communicate the cancellation message. Then within 30 days, they can um, come up with the objection. Then if any person uh, affected by the cancellation or deal, the cancellation decision of the monetary board, then he can go, go for a uh, approach the court of appeal within 14 days. Keep in mind within 14 days informed by the monetary board cancellation and then court of appeal may confirm or revise, modify or set aside the decision against the appeal. Then after expiration, expiration of 60 days from the issue of cancellation notice or after considering the objections, Monetary board may withdraw the notice or cancel the license and notify the bank. Okay. 
once the once the bank appealed to the monetary board within 60 days after expansion of 60 days from the issue of cancellation notice and after considering the objection the monetary board may withdraw the notice or cancel the notice notify the bank the cancellation of a license will be take effect where there is no appeal after the period of referring such appeal has expired or oh, where there is an appeal against the cancellation and cancellation is held up by the court of appeal. A, deci a decision to cancel the license will be published in the cassette. So actually here also the cancellation license, license cancellation has to be published in the cassette. So, so far we have studied about the, the liquidation of the uh, bank and then we have studied about the cancellation of license and what are the procedures and subsequent to the cancellation what, are the, what has to be, uh, what are the procedures to be followed and all sort of things has been discussed by us. Before going to the winding of our license finance company, if you have any question you can ask. Any questions, students? I am expecting some questions. Maybe close to the exam, you may have the questions uh, because these are the time you have you have started the studies or revisions. Then when you are study started to study, you may have come up with uh, several questions. Uh, or several doubts. So these are the actually at the latter part of the cl classes. Uh, normally the students ask several questions and clear the doubts. So you may have the questions or doubts uh, even today's class. If you'll have, you can ask. Otherwise, I can just continue the classes. Actually, uh, it is better to ask. Uh, if you have anything, just ask. Okay. Since there is no Questions, uh, there can be uh, two, three chances to not arising the prices. The first uh, first chance may be you may not have started the studies even though it is close to the exam. Or you may be in the new year uh, mood sometimes. Uh, okay, okay, then I'll just uh, move into the Winding up of a licensed finance companies. The winding up of a licensed finance company, LFC is licensed finance company. The director of supervision of non-bank financial institution department, DSNBFI, will make an application to court when such order is made by the monetary board. Actually, this is very common. In Sri Lanka, recently, two, three finance companies, I think more than three, three I think close to five, four or five companies have been licensed, have been cancelled. So last couple of years. So it, it is uh, it is well, well known procedures. Of course, in Sri Lanka, the cancellation of license of a, of a bank is very rare, very rare. But uh, the finance companies, of course, there are there are instances. So under that uh, one of the in, in, uh, circumstances, the director of non-bank supervision, supervision of non-bank finance institution, will make an application to court when such an order is made by the monetary board. Then the court will order the winding up and provision of the companies act relating to winding up subject to the provision of the court shall apply. If the court is of the opinion that company is not insolvent, 
it may make order permitting it to resume business actually the most of the cases the why the finance company says the problem is or cancellation or licenses it become the insolvent the assets is not enough to meet their liability but if the court is of the opinion that co company is not insolvent then it may make order permitting it to resume the business the director or any person authorized by the monetary board shall be the liquidator actually you can compare the liquidation of uh, uh, banks in the banking and say that the director bank supervision should be a liquidate oh it's a liquidate but here it says that the director or any person authorized by the monetary board shall be the liquidate any cost or charge etc may be paid by the central bank in the public interest where they cannot meet out of the company's fund in some cases actually the company's fund is not enough to meet the cost of liquidations there are cases because when you see some companies or finance companies which capital is negative negative in the sense huge negative there may not be funds and in the circumstance any cost or charge it may be uh, then that uh, uh, they can't make the company it cannot be made through the company's fund then the central bank can be paid in the public interest they are the regulators now then there are priority of clients so we just talked about the banking act what is the priority of client you all would have remember that even before the depositors there are some priorities here they gave two priority of clients first one is the minister may make regulations okay minister can say that this is the way they had to make the they have to pay the claims this is the priority until regulations are made provision of companies act and other applicable law to the extent not inconsistent with the finance business act shall be applied so these are the if there is any questions in the exam paper they are if they ask that what is the priority of claims in case of liquidation of a finance company licensed finance company then you all can say the minister may make the regulations <clears throat> but until the regulations are made provision of the companies act and the other applicable laws to the extent not to inconsistent with the business finance act shall apply understand so these are the uh, sort of priority to the of the client then cancellation of license by the monetary board there are four circumstances four no not four there are seven circumstances uh, the monetary board can cancel the license of a licensed finance company the failure to commence the business within 9 months of the issue of the license if they issue the license but they could they could not commence their business within 9 months period then the license of that particular finance company can can be cancel uh, cancel uh, that can be cancelled by the monetary board that is one of the circumstances failure to pay any debt incurred on it becoming due okay when it's become due but if the company failed to pay any any debt incurred then the cancellation of license could be there the fourth circumstances a petition or in an action of the relief file against the licensed finance companies and has appointed liquidator custodian or receiver cease to carry out finance businesses then in that case continuously violating provision of the business finance act or any direction ruled issued they are under 
so they can just uh, cancel the license failure to pay annual license fee carrying on business in a manner likely to be determinant to the interest of depositors or other creditors detrimental to the interest of its depositors and other creditors then they can go for a cancellation actually the cancellation of license there are seven circumstances are given all together the first one is failure of commencement of business within nine months failure to pay any debt incurred on the time due and a petition or any other action relief file against the licensed finance company then has appointed the liquidator or custodian or receiver and cease to carry out the finance business <coughs> and continuously violating the provision of uh, business finance act and failure to pay the annual license fee and carry on the business in a manner that that affect the deposit interest of the depositors and other creditors so in that case circumstances the monetary board can be issued a cancellation of license any any doubt you all want to ask i think uh, even though it is not uh, coming very frequently there's no questions about liquidations uh, but it's it's a, it's a it give a good knowledge to you all i believe so if you'll have any questions please let me know then i can just answer and clarify the things okay then the subsequent to the uh, subsequent action on cancellation even in the bank uh, the, the the banking license cancellation also we we see some subsequent actions similarly here also there are subsequent actions on cancellation monetary board may give notice to the company of the cancellations that is generally even there we saw that the monetary board may give notice to the company of the uh, company of the cancellation okay you can uh, your your license has been given it has to be conveyed so it has to be and the second one within 30 days of uh, 30 days the company can tender the objection the why license should not be cancelled this is similar the after expiration of 30 60 days from the issue of cancellation notice or after considering the objection monetary board may withdraw the notice or cancel the license still cancel the license so it's the procedures are very similar the first the monetary board uh, if, the, if the monetary board decided to cancel the license it may convey the message to the uh, monetary uh, the company okay your license have been cancelled then within 30 days they can submit the objections why license their license should not be cancelled after expiration expiration of uh, 60 days from the issue of cancellation notice and after considering the objections the monetary board may withdraw the notice or cancel the license so they can withdraw the notice or cancel the so uh, actually if the first stage is uh, the notice they will issue the notice of cancellation then after 60 days they can cancel the license a decision to cancel the license will be published in the gazette and at least in any daily circulated newspapers in three languages to inform general public that such company is no longer authorized to carry on finance business understand so uh, but what they have to do is they have to first decide um, if they make the cancellation uh, decision then they have to issue the the notice of cancellation to the company then within 30 days the company and submit the can the, the objections okay why our company should not cancel then after 60 days of expiry expiration of 60 days the company the central bank can withdraw the notice or cancel the license uh, permanently 
then decision to cancel the license will be published in the gazette and then in the in the in the daily circulated newspaper in the three languages it has to be informed to the general public that the company is not no longer authorized to carry the finance business what is the finance business accepting deposits and granting loans and advances and board will require the company or the director supervision of non bank financial institution to proceed with winding up of a company so these are the things subsequent to the cancellation okay any questions before moving to the other section which is about the deposit insurance uh if you all want to ask any 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 questions you all can answer this is so far we have uh, first we have um, discuss about the uh, general provision about the uh, cancellation winding up then we have discuss about the liquidation of a bank then we have uh, now we have just now we have discuss about the cancellation of license of uh, or liquidation of finance companies and under that cancellation of license so these are the things about the liquidations before going to the other section other section in the sense deposit insurance if you all need any questions or if you all need to clarify any questions you all can ask i am ready sir? to answer your questions sir what yeah? are the conditions uh, that uh, financial institute or um, uh, if say a bank can excuse their uh, cancellation is there any uh, condition that they should uh, accomplish Now, actually if when you are saying that they can submit their objections they can uh, for example when they the monetary board issue the uh, monetary board issue the cancellation notice they can here um uh, here see that the monetary board may give the notice to the company of the cancellation company means the bank and shall uh, communicate the same then within 30 days the company it means the bank can tender objection why the license should not be cancelled and any person aggrieve uh, aggrieve affected the cancellation of license can be um that okay the next one is if you see this clause after expiration of 60 days from the issue of cancellation notice or after considering the objections after considering the objection monetary board may withdraw the notice or cancel the license and notify the bank so actually even the banks are given the chance to ask the excuses excuses in the sense they can they can just they can just justify that why their license should not be cancelled so if the if they given the proper answer then of course uh, the cancellation no notice may be withdrawn but you will have to keep in a mind generally the central bank will not like to cancel any institution because it may create a stability issue in the country finance system stability issue in the country it's not like other institutions fail um, if a bank or finance companies get fail it may create a lot of issues to the finance system so that's why the actually the central bank will be uh, very generous on this so they will wait and they will try all the possibilities of uh rectify the issues in the company or bringing the new capital and all but in any uh, in any unavoidable circumstances also as a final decision also the central bank will just take a decision or monetary board will take a decision for issue the cancellation of notice so so once they issue the cancellation of notice it is very difficult to justify the company uh, for the continuation but there are possibilities or oh, there are chances given to the company or bank or finance companies to withdraw the uh, to to um, to withdraw that cancellation notice there's a provision 
Understand? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Then we will move to the final section, which is about the deposit insurance. The deposit insurance is sort of a, a sort of insurance system. Uh, Sri Lanka Deposit Insurance and Liquidity Support Scheme, which is, uh, I think, created in 2010, September, somewhere. So, under the uh, Sri Lanka Deposit Insurance Scheme Regulations Number 1 of 2010. So, this is this deposit insurance also coming under the central bank. So, Generally, before going to this um, each and every section, I just I, I just wanted to uh, telling the story. Actually, this fine when uh, finance companies are get fail, uh, the the depositors are getting affected because when they the when small depositors put the money, they 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 don't have any chances to get the money um, if if the finance companies are fail. So. To, uh, then that may create some doubt on the finance system stability of the country. So in order to create, in order to avoid that uh, situation, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, I, actually this, this was in, the, this has been in, in the world for a long time, but in 2010, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka created an insurance scheme called Deposit Insurance Scheme. Under the Deposit Insurance Scheme, uh, but what happened is all the banks and all the banks and finance companies which are authorized for to accept the deposits they have to mandatorily uh, pay some premium in every quarter I think 0 0.1% or 0 0.01% or something very minimum amount of uh, premium they have to pay for their deposit value so every quarter they have to pay then under that they, if they, if something happens, so that central bank is build up that fund and they are investing in treasury bill and treasury bonds and keep it that fund. So if any central, any finance company or any bank fail, then the um, depositors, particularly the small depositors, will get fund or the deposits from that fund. This is like a insurance scheme. So initially. The, in 2010, they fixed the limit for 200,000. Okay, if a, for example, if a, uh, if a customer, if a, if a license of the company, a finance company X was cancelled, then a, a, the customer A deposited in the X less than 200,000, then he is eligible to get the 200,000 of his deposit from the deposit insurance. Here we have to see a sort of uh, very tricky point actually this is this will be helpful to you all in the your life even the one person in a one company so the limit is applicable to one person in a one company so if a customer have a for the, they are, for example 200000 is the limit if the customer has the 1 million deposits what they can do is he can share the, all the deposits in the 200 200 into Five companies, if they deposit in the five companies, if all five companies fail, he will the, have the chance to get in there his one million as a uh, compensation from the deposit insurance. And this deposit insurance and other benefits, so time to time this uh, fund has been accumulated, then they have increased the limit to uh, 200,000 to 300,000, then 500,000 or 600,000. It was 600,000, even the, during the year. But recently, uh, the central bank issued a, a press release and saying that uh, that limit has been increased to 1.1 million, which is uh, actually the reasonably good amount. So if a company and they agreed to pay a refund for uh, the additional refund, because earlier they have paid for 600,000, then they say that those who <clears throat> those who depositors are eligible to get other uh, 500,000 additionally from the deposit insurance. 
I'm asking a question that, for example, if a customer A has a deposit in the uh, one of the failing company and the license has been cancelled, he has said the customer A has the deposit of 800,000. Okay. Under the new regulations, he can get NDA 800,000 from the deposit insurance as a compensation. Okay. But maximum limit is 1.1 million. For example, if the particular customer B, a particular customer B, he has a deposit of 1.1 million, 1.5 million, then he can get only up to 1.1 million. Okay, uh, then that is the thing. If it is a, the maximum gap is 1.1 million and per person, per institutions. For example, uh, if it is 1.1 million, if a customer has a uh, deposit in the, the finance as well as EAFL, the one or two failed companies, uh, then they can get each company's uh, the, uh, they, are, they are eligible to get the each uh, the 1.1 million from each company. So, 1.1 uh, million to 1.1 million, 2.2 million, he can get the compensation from the deposit insurance. That is the benefit of the deposit insurance. Uh, and another other thing is can be explained that in the deposit insurance, of course, if it is the joint account, it will be considered, the limit will be the 2.2 million. For example, Kaspan and wife jointly put the uh, money, then he, they are eligible to get the uh, double of the limit because two people. So that is the benefit of deposit insurance. The purpose of the deposit insurance is to uh, create a sort of stability, the financial system stability and uh, create a enhance the confidence of the uh, depositors in the system. That is the purpose. Then we will come to the, uh, the slide. They established the deposit insurance scheme under the regulations of number one of 2010. <coughs> Subsequently, the name changed to the Sri Lanka Deposit Insurance and Liquidity Support Scheme. And the deposit insurance unit was initially set up in the bank supervision department uh, of the CBSL. And it attended to operational management arrangement of the uh, Sri Lanka Deposit Insurance and Liquidity Support Services under the instruction and supervision of the Director Bank Supervision. The DBS means Director Bank Supervision in terms of directions and regulations and policies as provided by the Monetary Board. In 2008, Deposit Insurance Unit was removed uh, to the Resolution and Enforcement Department. Actually, in the 2008, January 1st, there was a new department created, which is called the RED, Resolution and Enforcement Department. So, the, the deposit insurance are handled by this Resolution and Enforcement Department right now. The objective is preserve the public confidence on the financial system by enhancing the safety of small investors. Actually, uh, now we can't say the small investors because limit is 1.1 million. Earlier, it was started with 200,000. Uh, the membership in the Sri Lankan Deposit Insurance Liquidity Support Service, the mandatory membership is a mandatory. It, it means all the licensed banks and all the uh, licensed finance companies has to be participated. Anybody can ask the questions why licensed specialized leasing companies, specialized leasing companies are not participating. Why? It cannot accept the deposit. As per the act, the leasing companies cannot accept the uh, deposit from the general public. So they cannot be the members. So uh, licensed bank and licensed finance companies can be the members. And so mandatory membership, so all the banks and finance company has to be member. And a risk-based premium is charged. For example, if the licensed commercial bank and specialized bank, if the capital adequacy ratio is more than 14%, then premium will be 0.1%. Uh, 
if not if the capital risk ratio is less than 14% then premium will be 1.15% and they have to pay it quarterly and if it is a licensed finance company uh 0.1.5% and paid monthly they have to pay monthly because their risk is high the penalty will be levied if premium paid are delayed or short total fund asset 31st uh, december 2019 for 74 members and a funds approximately 65 million even now the limit uh, the fund is nearly the 65 million i think 2020 uh, end results are not available yet uh, with the annual report only it, it can be seen and it's approximately 60 billion now uh, because we are the central bank made several payment to the depositors investment of the fund they are just investing in the government securities and secured advance loans to any members if actually if the member wants any any loan facilities liquidity facilities then they can get the fund from this uh, deposit insurance by uh, giving more uh, the, uh, by allocating securities they have to they have to do sort of repo with uh, they can do the repo with the insurance fund any questions and uh, the compensation paid in the event license member institution is suspended or cancelled by the monetary body. If the if the membership license, the license bank or license finance company's membership, the license has been cancelled by the monetary board, then they can get the compensation. The depositors will be compensated up to maximum of six hundred thousand. Actually, this six hundred thousand is earlier limit. Very recently, I think in two weeks before two or even within one month period they say that the limit is 1.1 million rupees it has been increased by 500,000 and day before yesterday or last monday the central bank issued a press release that they have started to pay the balance 500,000 because already they paid 600,000 for the depositors they top up the 500,000 so 1.1 million is the reason so if the, sometime there may be a question what is the deposited insurance limit so you have to say 1.1 million not the 600,000 now it's 1.1 million the compensation will be paid within six months from the date of the suspension the monetary board had cancelled the license of the four companies central investment and finance plc standard credit and finance plc tsk the finance The compensation payment commenced in 2018 and as of 31st December 19 paid around more than 2.2 billion for the depositors of the first two companies. Actually, now it is more than that. I think this, this is all about the deposit insurance. If you will have any questions, I can answer. Sir, yeah. So let's assume that previously a person has uh, invested uh, six hundred thousand rupees. Yeah. And he yeah. has gained the same under the uh, support schemes. I couldn't get it. Let's assume a person has deposited six hundred rupees in the finance. Okay and he has claimed the same amount at that time yeah then he will not be eligible to get another 500000 of course maximum amount is his the, the deposited amount but let's assume he deposited up to 800000 or 1 million then he okay. can claim balance 400000 okay it means uh, when it is 1.1 million only yeah, if it is 1.1 million only, because now it has been changed to 1.1 million. So again, he can claim for that balance amount. Yeah, he can claim for a balance amount and we have started to pay that from last Monday onwards. So they have yes. to approach the People's Bank branch 
and uh, you can see the press release from the bank so they can uh, they can claim the balance from the uh, the the central bank okay sir thank you okay Okay, then uh, actually, I, I think that that's all about uh, today's class. Um, so we have studied about the liquidation process and then we, we have uh, liquidation of the company, the general rules we have discussed about it. And then we have discussed about the, uh, the cancel liquidation of the bank and the cancellation of uh, the license of the bank. And then again, subsequently, we have discussed about the cancellation of finance uh, license of finance companies and liquidation process and then we have finally we have discussed about the uh, deposit insurance i think this is all about the finance institutions uh, liquidation process as well as the syllabus i think uh, with this i have covered entire syllabus of the uh, finance institution management uh, still i can just uh, discuss about the uh, papers if you want or oh, otherwise, I can actually uh, earlier the institute or the management says that today is the last class, so I have applied to this uh, class as a last class. Uh, if you all want any further classes, they say that there's a chance to uh, have a class in the not next week, the following week, maybe 24th, 23rd, 24th, or something. Um, so, following week, Saturday, Saturday, we can have the uh, class if you all want. Otherwise, I can stop the class with this because all the syllabus has been covered. Uh, if you want to discuss about the paper, uh, I think that there's a, there will be a revision class on uh, 8 May or something, 8, or 8, 8 May or 14 May, then you can participate at the uh, revision class and uh, uh, discuss about the paper. Or still, if you wanted to clarify something and you wanted to discuss some uh, papers or you want me to uh, discuss anything, I can, I'm ready to uh, convey that I, I, I'm, I'm ready to have a class in the following week as well. If you'll need, otherwise I can just cancel. If you'll really need, please uh, inform to the management, then I can, they will inform me and then I can uh, conduct the class. Otherwise, um, this will be the last class and uh, wish you all the best and uh, for a better performance in the exam.